Good morning everybody, Dr. Dhal Bandhu Majumdar of Kolkata here. Today I shall discuss an emergency management of snake bite. Whenever a snake bite case or a suspected case of snake bite or an unknown bite case comes to the emergency room of any hospital, we have a very beautiful flow chart that is management protocol of government of West Bengal. We follow this management protocol everywhere in all the hospitals of government of West Bengal. Nowadays, we have good protocol charts from ICMR and even national guideline. All are almost same. See, here are the government of West Bengal snake bite treatment protocol. Here we have given in details how to manage a snake bite or an unknown bite case attending one hospital. Whatever may be, if a bite case comes to an hospital, we have to admit the patient. We have strict instruction to admit all the cases of snake bite and suspected snake bites for 24 hours. We have to keep these patients admitted for observation if immediately we don't get any sign of inflammation. Now, if a patient comes in a condition of pulseless or respirationless condition, we have to resuscitate that patient. In each and every patient, we have to rapidly assess the general condition of the patient. If the patient is in respiratory arrest or even in pulseless condition, sometimes we have to give even CPR. And if a patient comes in respiratory arrest condition, we have to immediately intubate that patient and start assisted ventilation that is ambugar ventilation in the emergency. Before we can get an ICU bed, we have to start ambugar ventilation and that's not very impracticable. You see, Dr. Mohtasiv Alam, our junior friend has done it in the year 2017 in Salboni Rural Hospital only. He had saved this 10 year boy a great bite by ambugar ventilation only. He kept this boy at Salboni hospital with intubation and ambugar ventilation for five and a half hours. Then this boy returned his spontaneous respiration. If we have to transfer a patient to any higher center, if particularly it is a case of respiratory arrest in neurotoxic snake bite, we have to arrange for assisted ventilation in the ambulance also. You see this small boy in the lap of his mother. This boy attended on the rural hospital one evening with respiratory arrest. Here Dr. Madhusudan Hemram intubated the boy and he started ambugar ventilation and he himself went with the patient with ambugar ventilation in the ambulance to the Bakuda Medical College 22 kilometers away from Unda Rural Hospital and he was felicitated by Government of West Bengal. You see the CMOH of Bakuda felicitating Dr. Hemram. In the other side, you see some trainee nurses are maintaining ambugar ventilation in Jongipur Subdivision Hospital. They kept this boy alive for 18 hours in ambugar ventilation and here in the left upper corner you see one person is maintaining ambugar ventilation this person is a totally non-medical person he was a relative of this lady who was a pregnant lady with snake bite she went to respiratory failure and she was intubated and ambugar ventilation started and was referred to Bakuda Medical College from Bordjura State General Hospital that is almost 40 kilometers away. She was safely transported to Bakuda Medical College by assisted ventilation. If intubation is not possible, if laryngoscope is not available, you can use LMA, laryngeal mask array as an alternative. Though we have discouraged any ligature or tourniquet several times, we get many patients with multiple ligature bin. Never remove the ligature at the emergency room. Always admit the patient and start an IV fluid. Then only remove the ligature. 
otherwise there may be catastrophe at the emergency room now see if what we do when a patient is admitted if we get signs of frank envenomation signs of envenomation are present in the emergency room then immediately we admit the patient and start an iv channel and start normal saline we don't use renal lactate as the starting fluid in this bottle of normal saline we have to add 10 vials of indian polyvalent antivenom dose of antivenom is same both in adult and in children and in pregnancy also in case of pregnancy treat the patient as usual don't hesitate to treat a case of snake bite with pregnancy if you cannot save the mother how can you save the baby in the womb you have to reduce the amount of fluid in case of children otherwise there will be fluid overload before adding antivenom reduce the amount of fluid to 200 ml or less for all the snake bites all the venomous snake bites in west bengal the starting dose is 10 vials practically for all the venomous snake bites in india 10 vials is the starting dose only exception is hoskel viper in case of hoskel viper we can start with 5 vials of polyvalent antivenom if envenomation is present this is v mixed normal saline is transfused in jet as early as possible then we maintain a slow normal saline drip for 24 hours if needed we have to repeat other 10 vials or 20 vials particularly in case of russell viper bite we may have to infuse up to 30 vials of antivenom to prevent renal failure now how to be sure that the patient who has come with a history of bite is envenomated or not the signs of envenomation have to be found before we start antivenom in case of cobra bite that is hooded snake bites if the patient is a hooded snake that is cobra spectacled cobra or monoclade cobra there will be frank signs of local signs of envenomation there will be painful bite and progressive swelling immediate pain and progressive swelling are signs of cobra bite envenomation but in case of russell's viper bite there may not be immediate pain and swelling in many a times we have got russell's viper bite with late signs of envenomation that is late swelling and late pain and crate bites are most mysterious in common crate bite there will be no bite mark there will be no pain there will be no local swelling totally different type of presentation i shall discuss that later on in a case of neurotoxic bite that is classical neurotoxic bite that is cobra bite there will be immediate pain and swelling in the bite site usually we get bite marks but bite marks are not sure signs of envenomation we have to forget the two fang mark theory many a times two fang mark theory has misled us you see the foot of this 12 year girl there are definite two fang marks but it was a case of dry bite and in case of common crate bite there will be no bite mark many a times we have missed common crate bite cases when we have tried to find out bite marks so we have to forget two bite mark theory there may be more than two bite mark there may be a cut mark there may be like laceration mark you see in the foot of this patient there is a cut like mark it is also a monoclade cobra bite mark so bite mark is not going to help us too much if we give too much emphasis on two bite mark theory we will miss many cases but 
immediate local pain and swelling are classical sign of cobra bite there will be immediate pain and swelling after few minutes maybe 30 minutes or 45 minutes in case of cobra bite there will be systemic signs of neurotoxicity there may be ptosis of tonoplegia difficulty in deglutition difficulty in speech and rapidly this these patients deteriorate to respiratory failure but in case of great bite that's also a case of neurotoxicity systemic signs of neurotoxicity comes very late these patients usually present in the early morning with pain abdomen or sore throat or any other bizarre symptoms we keep them admitted and under observation after 2 to 24 hours we have got acute unexplained bilateral ptosis acute unexplained bilateral ptosis with a history of floor bed is a sure sign of common crate bite there may not be any history of bite the snake may not be seen you may not get any bite mark but if you get unexplained bilateral ptosis always think of common crate bite and Russell's viper bites are usually painful and usually there will be some slow swell, swelling but pathognomonic sign of Russell's viper bite is abnormal bleeding abnormal bleeding from any site maybe from the bite site maybe from an injection site the sister has given a tetanus toxin and there has been subcutaneous hematoma after one hour or two hour you may get bleeding from gum you may get epistaxis you may get bleeding from any old ulcer the patient cuffs and the sputum may be blood stained even there may be hemoptysis or hematemesis or there may be blood in stool and maybe blood in urine also if Russell's viper bite patients are treated late if enough antivenom is not given in early time there will be definitely acute renal failure in early stage there may be hematuria then after 12 hours there will be oliguria and within 24 hours there will be total renal shutdown we then we do blood biochemistry if blood urea and creatinine is increasing we plan for hemodialysis now to diagnose a venomous snake bite each a broad snake enough no broad snake are many times misleading if you diagnose envenomation by looking towards a broad snake you may misdiagnose many a times a wrong snake was brought you see in this earthen pot one non-venomous wolf snake was brought but this bitten girl was ultimately diagnosed to be a case of Russell viper bite by 20 WBCT let me discuss the procedure of 20 WBCT 20 WBCT is a gold standard test for coagulopathy if we suspect a case of Russell's viper bite that is hemotoxic bite Russell's viper or Soskel viper bite we do 20 WBCT the bedside it can be done at a primary health center also what is needed you need only a new clean glass test tube dry clean glass test tube draw 2 3 milliliter of venous bar and keep it in the glass test tube for 20 minutes undisturbed don't disturb in between after 20 minutes dot 20 minutes gently tilt the test tube if blood is not coagulated that is blood is liquid be sure that there is Russell's viper envenomation atropine and neostimine injections are life saving in a case of cobra bite we always tell insert an injection an 
बिकॉज यू हैव टू ऑलवेज गिव एट्रोपिन फर्स्ट देन नियोस्टिकमिन डोंट मेक इट रिवर्स गिव वन एम्पुल एट्रोपिन आई वी देन थ्री मिली लीटर नियोस्टिकमिन दैट इज वन पॉइंट फाइव मिलीग्राम नियोस्टिकमिन इंट्रामास्कुलर और इंट्रोभेनस माओपाइरोलेक इज ए गुड अल्टरनेटिव हियर we get neostigmin with glycopyrrolate glycopyrrolate do the action of atropine you need not give atropine separately glycopyrrolate ampules contain 2.5 mg neostigmin in case of cobra bite if you don't give an injection that is atropine and neostigmin the patient may not survive plenty of antivenom may not Save a patient of cobra bite. You see, these two unfortunate persons, young lady and young man, they were given 18-20 vials of antivenom, but neostigmine was not available in those hospitals, and both these unfortunate patients died. So always be careful to keep atropine and neostigmine in hand. Some of our colleagues are afraid of. antivenom reaction antivenom reaction is not so rare but antivenom reactions are not very severe most of the time we have not registered a single case of death due to antivenom reaction in last 10 years antivenom reactions are common but deadly reactions are not so common to prevent antivenom reaction you can use 0.25 ml of adrenaline subcutaneous immediately before giving antivenom and if there is any antivenom reaction keep adrenaline ready in syringe you have to give 0.5 ml of adrenaline intramuscularly keep in mind not subcutaneously see not intravenously you have to give intramuscularly adrenaline 0.5 mg intramuscularly is the treatment for any antivenom reaction what are the antivenom reactions very commonly there will be arterial rashes or scalp itching there may be sudden fall of bp the patient may collapse there may be some bronchospasm and dry cough or anything else whatever you get You stop the antivenom for the time being and give adrenaline 0.5 intramuscularly. Within five to seven minutes, the patient will be recovered. Then again, you have to restart the antivenom. You can repeat adrenaline intramuscularly two times. To see carefully our West Bengal snake bite treatment protocol, there we have clearly written: never refer any snake bite patient. Without infusion of 10 vials of antivenom, if you have doubt, you keep the patient admitted, but never refer the patient without antivenom coverage. If you have to refer the patient to higher center, particularly in case of Russell Viper bite, you, you may have to refer the patient for hemodialysis. Then also you have to infuse minimum 10 vials of antivenom at your primary hospital. then you have to transfer if you transfer a patient without antivenom coverage the half an hour or one hour time spent in the way to higher center the kidney will be damaged and in case of cobra bite if you don't transfer the patient without an injection that is atropine and neostigmine the patient may go to total respiratory failure on the way to a higher center so be cautious to transfer a case of snake bite to a higher center always try to give antivenom coverage and in case of cobra bite atropine and neostigmine injection and if possible send the patient with assisted ventilation support in the ambulance thank you thank you all for listening